Hey guys, Jamie here, keeping it coy. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. So today, with a few bits and bobs, I just want to start off with an apology. Uh, sorry I didn't have a video out last night, but uh, unfortunately I've not been very well <coughs> due to all the uh, stress and anxiety um, and everything. Um, I don't deal well with, uh, with certain situations, as some of you probably already know out there and uh, with all this he sheds he sh he said she said malarkey that's been going around on youtube yet again my name's been thrown into the hat um, apparently i've done things that i've not done so um anyway that aside i don't do rants on this channel so yeah unfortunately that was the main reason uh, i wasn't able to do a video last week and to be honest if i did it would have probably bored you anyway because it's been so cold as you all know that the fish have been doing not a lot but sitting as Vince would say on the bottom like a cigar so uh, yeah Ooh, it's cold out here today again um, we are though up above zero not by a lot it's two degrees two degrees today so uh, yeah that's why there wasn't a video uh, out last week yeah got a couple of uh, mentions shout outs thank yous uh, to do first one my buddy Sai. Turn it around so you can see it. Got a new mug, size world of koi. And at the moment it's got a lovely cup of coffee in it. It's hot. Which is good because I'm freezing. Put that back down there. So yeah, Sai, that's uh didn't even read you the mug, did I? It's uh size world of koi, just a dad and his pond. It's a lovely mug to add to the collection. Speaking of mugs, in fact, when we go over there, I'll show you what I'm going to do with all my mugs because I'm getting a right little collection now. But uh, yeah, bless his heart. He sent me it with a little thank you note. And uh, I don't know why he's thanking me, but <laughs> a little thank you note and uh, another sticker to add to my collection. All my stickers are going to go in the filter house once I've uh, finished putting me shells and bits and bobs up in there of where I want things. So, uh, First uh, thank you is to uh, Sai from Size World of Koi. Second thank yous is I want to thank the people that have been thanking me. Now I'm not going to name names because I haven't asked permission or anything like that. But since starting my channel, I've had quite a few private emails, messages on Facebook, um, case sera sera, of people thanking me for doing the videos the way I did because it's helped them now build theirs or start building theirs and um, obviously there's been a few questions along the way of how did i do this how did i do that i know of at least nine people now that have copied my pond minus the filtration and whatnot but the way i've built my pond with the sleepers rebar etc etc down to a t basically um, and it's just really nice when when you receive a thank you email or to show that something i'm doing is, is helping others so that's that's always a bonus speaking of um building sleeper ponds though if anybody is copying my pond build um i get a lot of questions about how i fitted my window and i did do a pretty good video on that but if you haven't seen cwd uh carl his name is from cwd uh is a pond builder basically and builds mostly sleeper ponds um, and almost weekly at the minute he's got another sleeper pond build that he's, he's putting out there so it's uh, certainly worth a look he does do it different to the way uh, I do it but he does fit the, the windows in exactly the same way as how I've done and uh, he does say he's still got a hundred percent success rate doing it that way so that's always a bonus so yeah if you haven't, haven't seen his channel go check him out absolutely cracking lad and does some lovely ponds he's just finished doing one that was sort of half inside half outside uh, sleeper pond and something different you know so yeah go check that out but yeah um that'll do for thank yous and shout outs for today let's spin you around and have a look and discuss what the plans are for the fish koi pond and garden so we've got a 50 50 pond today 50 percent of the fish are up and mooching about and the other 50 percent are all down there on the bottom now, apologies for the uh, the window it's literally the second i i've just literally squeegeed it before i uh, unpause the camera and then uh, it's so foggy out here today the window literally clouds up in seconds so uh, yeah you can't see an awful lot but uh, let's put you under the net yeah. 
They seem to like that bottom corner, but I suppose that's the, the bit with the least flow, because all my flow comes in this side and then goes out, obviously, at the bottom drain and the skimmer over there. So that bottom corner will have the uh, the least of the flow. But yeah, they're all happy and unky dory other than sulking, but uh, it's one degrees in there today. Blooming cold, and as I mentioned earlier, look, it's also one degrees on there as well. So yeah, another cold old day. Um, the fry, we'll go and have a look at them as well, but uh, they're just having a water change, just clean the uh, the filter out. Bonsai's are doing absolutely fantastic. Got uh, another one you guys haven't seen, this one. But, uh, that's got a real twisted trunk on that one, but it's only a baby at the minute, so uh, yeah, we'll have a closer look and a better look at that in the spring. Got two more cheap little trees that are going to be bonsais at the back there. Obviously you've seen all these uh, that I've worked on, bonsais. Me black pines, they're uh, a couple of didn't make the uh, cold snap by the look of it. You got like, one like that. I don't know if that one's going to pull through or not, but he's still got green on it. He ain't fully brown yet, but the rest of them are growing bullios. I mean, this this one shooting up loads. So uh, they're all going to need repotting again at some point because they're going to outgrow them. I've also picked up a uh, Christmas tree that I'm going to give a go at bonsai in. Look at that for a bargain. Look. Was 12 down to three quid. And that tree is what, probably about two foot tall maybe just a bit more look at the old fishies from this side but yeah my plan is as you all know i'm going to be putting a pond here very very shortly and um, got the bricks up the garden um, but what my plan is i couldn't think of where i wanted to put my mugs um i've got probably around 10 12 mugs now but my plan was initially to put a shelf in there but there's not an awful lot of room in there not an awful lot at all so my plan is now to put a nice shelf all the way along the back of here and if I need to all the way along that side as well and um, put a mug shelf in there so uh, the pond will be same height as what that is ish and then mugs will go along along there so that could work quite well that's the plan anyway but uh, yeah before I uh, start digging that I am uh, waiting for the weather to warm up a little bit because it's really cold and I did this one as you'll probably all, or some of you will remember did this one through last winter and uh, yeah, building a pond in the winter is not easy so uh, we're going to uh, wait for that one but I've got a few more bonsais in here as well so uh, I think you've seen those four but I've also now picked up this one not too sure what that is didn't have no leaves on it so we'll find out I just like the uh, the colour of the trunk and it seems a very healthy tree. Got lots of buds coming through, so that's a bonus. I've got this little green one with green leaves, looks like it's been attacked, but I would say looking at these leaves, it's some form of holly. Not sure, but that'll make it again a different than usual bonsai. This one's got prickles on it, so I don't know what that one's gonna be, but again it just adds some nice movement in the trunk. So I like that one. And then my two larger ones. Again, not too sure what they are yet. I have to wait till they leaf. If they leaf, that one I had to cut right back. But uh, again, it's got a nice thick trunk on that one. So, uh, but yeah, this one's got a nice shape to it. But they're only starter bonsais. It, you know, it takes years and years of growth and tweaking to make them look like a, a mini tree. But it's a start. And with the 70 odd black pines I've got, uh, we'll have quite a few. Obviously, me yew trees down here. Picked all them up last November, I think, and they've all seemed to uh, take quite well in the pots down there. And then obviously all my oak trees are in there, except for the one on the floor. The one on the floor is a um, hazelnut tree. So, uh, the ones on the back are all oak, and that one's a, a hazelnut tree. Also, back in the uh, pagoda, I also forgot to mention, I got two trees off Facebook given to me absolutely free and uh, these ones are walnut trees you can actually see the shell of the walnut in that one obviously like me squirrels in the garden burying walnuts and uh, yeah a couple of little walnut trees don't know if they're going to make a good bonsai but 
only one way to find out really isn't there so uh, yeah we'll see how they get on so yeah as you've seen the fish in this pond are doing uberly fantastic let's have a look in the old net yeah they're all doing all right they're not as sulky as the bigger ones but then there are a couple just sitting sort of on the bottom of the net down there but uh, yeah they're all doing well comes that up in a minute let's have a look at the fry the fry surprisingly after the first cold snap um, they've done all right actually haven't had any losses at all in this cold snap See, loads still in there. Just going to see a few there from Adam Byer, and obviously there's still a few of my own spawning, and then the majority are still the Sheiky Boy. But, uh, there are a couple of deformities in there still from the uh, main, well, I think all the deformities are from the Sheiky Boy, but they were completely unselected, right? And the ones I got from Adam were handpicked by myself and Adam. And uh, yeah, I didn't have any deformities out of my own fine here. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a big variety in size in there. Um, I think the biggest one in there now is about four to five inch, maybe closer to five. Um, and I've still got a couple in there that's literally only about an inch long. And, uh, yeah, but as you can see, there's a damn good mix in there. But, uh, I suppose it is for three different, three different places, three different spawns. There's certainly going to be a keeper or two in there, that's for sure. Which does mean I'm going to have to make some more room in the main pond. Which means a few of the uh, bigger fishies will have to be moved on this year. But what can you do? But yeah, they're, uh, as you can see by the hose pipe in there, they're just having a, a water change thing their uh, pressure filter out today. But yeah, that's about it. The Japanese garden, I think the ice has caused a leak. In my pond, so that's going to be need to be redone this year. Let me spin you around again. Yeah, as you can see, it's still frozen over in there, um, but you can see under there how much the water level's dropped. The water level's normally up to and underneath all the big rocks around the edge. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going down about an inch a day at the minute, although it does seem to stop there. So I'm guessing the ice and the rocks and stuff on the shelf around there has put an hole in it somewhere but uh, meh that was literally just the old pond liner from the old, old pond so I'm really not too fussed um, and that won't take me more than a day to cut that out and drop a new one in there is underlay underneath it as far as I'm aware but yeah it's almost bonsai season which is why I've been talking about bonsais because uh, I'm going to be repotting these uh, this year and they, they did really well last year really really well they're going to need a major prune as well because they've got a bit a bit twiggy but uh, the three big ones I'm all going to try and repot them if I can I mean the trunks on them I mean from back here they do look not as big as they are but if I put my try and get in there I mean they're a fair sized chunk but I mean I haven't got small hands per se but compare that to my finger look it's, it's a fair trunk and that's not that's the smallest trunk I think as well <laughs> but yeah, they've all got a, a real nice trunk on them so the plan is to get them out of the big tall pots and get them into these shallower ones and I mean that, that's like 15 centimetres high whereas the soil in there is probably just over a foot deep so I've got a lot of root work to do on them. But uh, yeah, almost almost ready. As I've said to you guys before, the time to repot things like this is just as they're starting to bud, uh, which they are. The buds are just starting to form now. So uh, yeah, over the next sort of month or so, these will all get repotted. And uh, for those of you that remember my last video, and I was talking when, when you uh, cut an ace, you get some dieback. This is what. I was talking about that you can see it better on this one 
when you cut an acer you generally expect to get some die back and it's basically where yeah it's just where after you cut it's not going to focus on it now but after you cut that bit hey where's the black there you go yeah after you cut that bit you generally get an inch or two of die back from the shoots and then uh, once it's all died back all you then do is uh once you know it, it will stop at some point and once it does you can then just snip the dead bit off at the off at the end and it shouldn't then die back any more further than that but yeah a few more bonsais in here obviously i've got this one now this one's annoying me i can't work out what it is it was sold to me as a white pine but uh most of you probably know white pines don't lose their needles every year and then grow them back they're evergreens same as the black pine but what can you do never um, if, if someone can tell me what that is let me know let me know another oak tree in there and a few other uh, i think they're all oak trees in there as well conquer tree olive tree bonsai galore bonsai galore so yeah, that's all my new ones, as you've seen in there. Um, but yeah, so I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, another reason <coughs> why I uh, didn't have a video out last weekend is because not only was I not feeling up to doing any filming over the week to put out for you guys at the weekend, but uh, the weekend was extremely stressful for other reasons some of you know we not only do we have koi and nala the dog we also have sugar gliders and unfortunately one of our sugar gliders has been very ill she's got or had a dental disease and that occasionally causes her to swell up big abscessed um, and normally it's just a trip down our local ish vets um, to get some antibiotics anti-inflammatories a um, week or two later she's fine it started to flare up again we call the vet really sorry she's left great you try and find a specialist vet that can treat a sugar glider must have spoke to about 60 different vets nearest one to us is either Leicester Bedford or Cambridge which are all well over an hour away um, in each direction so uh, we finally did find a vet that would see them not that they're a specialist by any means down in Kettering and they saw them, gave us some meds, but it was, unfortunately by the time we got in there and found a vet that was willing to see them, it was too late. So we took her to a specialist to see if anything could be done, and unfortunately not. By the time we got to the specialist vet, when they were able to see us uh, down in Leicester, um, the abscess burst, her eye burst, um, and it wouldn't have been a very good life for her. So unfortunately we had to make the hard decision to have uh, one of our sugar gliders uh, put to sleep. So that was on the Friday. And then on the Monday, we then had to take the male sugar glider because that was the female of our breeding pair. Uh, the male can't then live on his own, but he also couldn't be put in with the other sugar gliders because he's still intact. So on Monday, back down to the specialist vets in Leicester again um, and uh, yeah unfortunately uh, he's had his knackers uh, gone shall we say and uh, wait for him to heal up fully on that he can then go live in with the rest of the family and we are no longer breeding shrew gliders we are just having them as pets <clears throat> still got four we did have five but we've only got four now so uh, yeah yeah so uh, that was that but uh, yeah, I've also been thinking in regards to the channel, um, I mean, you guys are absolutely fantastic. Obviously, I wouldn't still be doing it if it wasn't for you lot. So yeah, thank you again all, all for, for watching. But in regards to the channel, I've been thinking of how can I, I always forget, how can I get more shout outs for you guys, for the other YouTubers and whatnot into my videos? Because I always forget, Vince has his, I see you <laughs> at the beginning of his videos. And I know a lot of other channels have regular shout outs. Well. I'm going to take a leaf, um, I was thinking about it for a while, but he's beating me to it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a leaf out of my Aquamigo buddy uh, over in California, in America. Um, and he's just recently started doing uh, shout outs for a comment uh, in, the, in the comments down below here. So I'm going to take a leaf out of his book, even though I already had the idea in my head. I'm giving you the credit. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, so comment of the day from last video, two weeks ago now. This one, far more coy. Absolutely cracking lad with a cracking pond. And he's got a couple of little uh, fry vats and everything. But uh, Tony said, good job, Jamie. You are going to watch out for low flying aircraft. The ones that mistake it for an approach light. <laughs> Did make me chuckle. And then there's also this one. Uh, Phil from Telford Koi Pond said, nice update, Jamie. That looks like a great bit of kit. Uh, like the way you can light up three different directions. I've used those waterproof connectors a few times and they are very useful. Yes, they are. Um, as I say, it was a, I don't deal with electric, so it was the first time I'd ever come across them. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be working. I took on board some of your advices, which was change the fuse in the light from a 13 amp down to a five. And it's still working, an absolute treat. Um, but yeah, so shout out to Phil and a shout out to Tony. That's to Tony from Farmore Koi and uh, Phil from Telford Koi Pond. If you haven't seen any of those channels, the links are in the description uh, underneath this video. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's swing down to uh, Quenny Koi and have a look at some fishies. Isn't that the baby tank? Full of lots of chagoys, showers, sankeys. Lots and lots of fish. They look really healthy as well, considering the time of the year, they obviously want feeding. And I think they're heated to 15 degrees in here, so no doubt they will be. Let's have a look at another tank. Again, okay, got a good mix in this tank. Considering it's close season, they've still got some cracking koi here. A couple of tiny little baby ones in with some big ones. All staying below the bubbles, can't really see them in there. Sanky shower mix. Absolutely cracking koi in there. Not bad prices either, but then I suppose it's close season, they might have reduced them a tiny bit. Some slightly bigger ones. All around sort of 30 to 40 centimetres I'd say in there. Again, some absolute crackers there. Real, real nice. Some bigger just kahaku in here, these are... Uh, Mariyama Nisai. And the GC bloodline as well. Should have bought my polarising lens with me, shouldn't I? Never mind. Cracking fish. Some big old kahaku in this one. 50 to 60 centimetres I'd say in there. Oh that's a nice one. Certainly got a bit of everything in here, isn't there? Some not for sale coys in there, they're all covered up at the minute. Currently not for sale. Oh look at these beauties. Hungry, hungry, crashy boy. Oh, some of the kahaka in there are absolutely stunning. They really, really are. I might have a quick sneak peek at the prices in this one. Big old chagoys. Call a nice shower. A lot of people would say that's a sankey, but I'm going with shower. It's gone now anyway. Beautiful quite. My missus likes the Jin Matsubis. 
They are very, very nice. And look at the page I've got it on. Yeah, we all know Tancho is my favourite fish. That one is quite a nice one as well. Shouldn't mean Tancho. I do like that Goshiki though. to the big tank I mean, you've all seen this setup before three big backy showers one of their big old drums around the back and some absolutely cracking koi in there as always oh, he's nice huge Got to love a trip to Quenny Coy, ain't ya? Aha, Tancho! Oh, the clarity of the water in here is absolutely spot on. Look at that Tancho shower. Ooh. In fact, that's not a Tancho shower, is it? That's a Tancho Becco. I would say goits as well. Very, very nice. Got some cracking fish in there. Trip to Quenny. More fishies. These ones are currently in quarantine at the minute. But I tell you what, there's some monsters in there. I say there's a couple in there pushing 90, maybe even a couple in there pushing a metre. Woo! Wow, that tan show down there. Absolutely stunning. One day, one day. Oh, that Akamatsuba. Oh, come back. Oh, and the Goromo. Oh, there's just so many. Just so many. And as usual, all your fittings, all your foods, all your medicines, and absolutely everything. And then you've got your ornaments and your filtrations, as always, at Quenny. If you've not been down to Quenny Koi, it's certainly worth a visit, even this time of year. So I will snap back to you later. So yeah, that was my uh, trip to Quenny Koi. Didn't come back with any fish. Makes a change for me, doesn't it? Um, did come back with any fish, but uh, I did get some food that I needed. It's for the fry, but lower temperature food because all I've got is extremely, very, very high protein uh, uber growth food for the fry. And obviously, with the temperature at the minute, the main pond's at one degree, but the fry back because it's covered 24 7 is uh, actually at about seven degrees. I think that's because of the regular and daily water changes help as well because uh, it comes out of the tap at about 11 degrees, I think. So uh, that keeps it a bit warmer as well. So yeah, I've got some food uh, for them that I can feed at lower temperatures. It's basically a two and three meal pellet all seasons type thing. <coughs> so they'll be all right with that. I, I've literally just been crushing up some uh, wheat germ just to keep them tidied over for now because that, that's always warmer than the, uh, than the main pond. So they haven't had food every day, but just when, when the pond sort of reaches that sort of nine, 10 degree mark, they have a, have a bit. But yeah, so lovely trip down to Quenny. Uh, what else did I get? I got uh, some salt as well, a big bag of salt, because uh, I haven't got any left now. Well, I have now. I didn't have any. Um, and yeah, that's uh, in case needed. Salt baths and whatnot, that kind of thing. It's good for treating certain parasites as well. Um, so always handy to, to have. But yeah, everything seems to be ticking over and working fine. We've had no losses uh, in regards to the cold this year. 
um, other than the, the sort of the baby baby fry, um, which again you expect that. But yeah, pond has been at below zero in the first cold snap because that really really was cold. But yeah, no no losses at all in this one, and it, this one's lasted uh, longer than the first one as well. I think. But yeah, so I finished my coffee now. Double sided mug couldn't really do that earlier because it was full of coffee. But uh, yeah. So I finished my coffee, I'm going to go inside, start to warm up. Again, as I said in the beginning of the video, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I, I'm glad some of my videos has helped some of you out. Um, really appreciate the feedback. I'm glad you've all now got a pond like mine. But yeah, so thanks all for watching. Like the video, share it to all your friends, and we'll catch you all on the next one.